Hartelijk welkom, beste luisteraars. This is Paul speaking from Holland. And for the record, you are listening to Watchmen Internet Radio. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I got a up price for y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Frozen. A6 all the hay. I won't get involved today. Got lost in the ball of days. I'm flipping the balls. I'm flipping the, flipping the, flipping the. On record, off record, I still count wins when they got it. On record, off record, I let them take advantage. I was wildin'. On record, off record deals. Tell them talk to Colin for the quote. On record, off record, I still want the act, not the ghost. Running through it with the young influence. Had a less impression. I'm so coming to it. I've been giving yeses when I shouldn't do it. I complete ejection, but the moves are looser than I'm barely moving. But I'm still gon' boost them. I can't work on winners when I know you're losing. So I work the winners and they throw the Guess I have to pivot, shooting the bazookas for the facts. I need racks, paper, rack, cash, rack. good tax. That's a joke. Tell them laugh. Uncle Sam, cut the bag. Brody plot, but get a whack. Contract, give me the max. I got laugh on my back. You ain't that. Then it's raps. Whoa, 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 whoa. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. Yes, for the record, you ain't trying to grow, then it's done for you. Yes, for the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to waste. For the record, for the record, yeah. For the, for the record. Well, well, hello, everyone. And uh, for the record, I cannot vouch for the lyrics of that song. You can't quite make them out, but uh, it says in the parentheses that it's the clean version, so I'm going with that. But that's a relative term, isn't it? (laughs) Rap music, uh, very creative in some instances, but it is notoriously vulgar. Uh, But it does have a catchy beat, doesn't it? I hope everyone is doing well. It is Friday, and uh, for you working folks, I'm happy for you. Hopefully you get a weekend, a rest, or do what you need to do. We're going to talk about the big issue. And, uh, well, first let me read the daily text for Friday, January 18. Strike his bone and flesh. And he will surely curse you to your very face. Those are the words of Satan the devil, as recorded at Job 2, verse 5. Well, the Watchtower's comment goes, The devil's challenge no doubt aroused indignation, anger, and contempt among heavenly creatures loyal to God. Jehovah, however, did not react hastily. His response was measured and entirely fitting. He has been slow to anger and has been just in dealing with Satan's revolt. Why? Jehovah has allowed time to pass because he does not want anyone to be destroyed but desires all to attain to repentance. Jehovah's exercise of self-control teaches us that we ought to weigh our words and consider our steps carefully. We should not rush into things. When you face an important issue, give yourself the time you need to act wisely. Pray for wisdom to say or do the right thing. In the heat of the moment, it is all too easy to react emotionally. Many of us have lived to regret hasty words or rash actions. Well, that is uh, certainly true. God did uh, measure his response. 
But it wasn't merely uh, because he didn't want to destroy uh, the wicked. Jehovah wants to settle this issue. And of course, the Watchtower teaches that as well, just uh, didn't uh, highlight it in this particular comment. But I think Jehovah's Witnesses are the only ones that really appreciate this great issue. Of course, Satan had already slandered Jehovah in the Garden of Eden and implied that God was holding something back, that God couldn't trust his creatures, and that God really couldn't be trusted himself to deal straightforwardly. That was what was implied by Satan. And other angels had joined Satan in rebellion, coming down, marrying women, up until Jehovah flushed them out with the great deluge, and they returned to heaven. We don't know if the demons were on hand on this occasion when the sons of God assembled to take their station before Jehovah, but Satan was surely among their number. It's interesting, though, that Satan didn't bring up this issue voluntarily. Jehovah invited him to. God knew that what he was thinking, and he wanted this issue out so that it can be resolved permanently. And that's why Jehovah said to Satan, Have you taken note of my servant Job? There's no one like him on the earth. He is an upright man of integrity, fearing God and shunning what is bad. Well, that's when Satan responded that uh, a man will do anything to save his neck. But that was the second uh, time that Jehovah invited Satan to speak. The first time, Satan said, Is it for nothing that Job has feared God? You've, you've put a hedge around him. You've blessed him. In other words, you're bribing him. You're bribing your people to worship you. Who wouldn't? You give them all these goodies and protect them. So God said, okay, take what he has. Just do not touch him. Well, you likely know the story, but it is worth noting that there is no mention of Satan the devil in the Hebrew text until it mentions him in the book of Job. There's no mention in Genesis that the serpent was being used by this uh, invisible, wicked angel. Adam and Eve may not have known. And there's very little mention of Satan in the entire Hebrew text, a couple of mentions. Jesus really exposed Satan for who he is, the original liar and the murderer and the, the ruler of this world. We don't know if Job was really aware. And so when God gave Satan permission, it was as if God had done it. God allowed Satan more or less to murder Job's family and lay the smoking gun at God's feet, right? I mean, what was Job supposed to think? And when you think about it, Job had all these possessions and servants. He had seven sons and three daughters. And on one day, he lost everything. A band of Sabians came and took his livestock. Chaldeans came and killed his servants, took his camels. Uh, lightning, well, we don't know. Is it fire came from the heavens and blazed among his livestock. It may have been literal fire or lightning. And then a great windstorm collapsed the house where his children were banqueting and killed them all. What was Job supposed to think? What would you think if in one day all of this calamity befell you? You would think, God has it in for me. But in all of that, Job did not curse God. He said, Jehovah has given, Jehovah has taken away. Let the name of Jehovah continue to be blessed. But now it is sobering when we think about the power 
that's Satan has. He was able to put it into the minds of the Sabians. Hey, I want you to go uh, plunder this man's goods. He was able to put it in the minds of the Chaldeans at the exact same time, and they came and plundered Job. And then, as I mentioned, he apparently controlled the weather, brought about a windstorm and weather lightning or literal fire. Uh, we don't know. Well, Jesus once made the comment. Uh, he's telling his disciples that uh, he was going to go to the Father, and he said, the ruler of of the world is coming, and he has no hold on me. Well, he meant that Satan could not influence him. Satan tried. He tried to tempt him three times in the wilderness. If you bow down and do an act of worship to me, I'll give you everything. He did exactly what he accused Jehovah of doing, bribing for worship. But it does show the power that Satan has over us. He had no hold on Jesus because Jesus was perfect. He didn't have any selfish inclinations or tendencies. Satan couldn't get into his mind and work him over. But we can't say the same. Remember even the Apostle Peter, when Jesus was talking about his death Peter pulled him aside and said, Be kind to yourself, Lord. You will not have this destiny at all. And Jesus shocked him with his reaction, no doubt. He said, Get behind me, Satan. You think men's thoughts and not God's. He knew Jehovah's will for him. He knew Jehovah's will was that he give his life, really, to settle this issue that Satan says that a man will give anything to spare his life. He will disobey God. He'll curse God to his face. So it was God's will that Jesus go all the way. Remember, he didn't let Satan kill Job, but he let Satan kill Jesus. And Jesus knew his end was coming, that God was going to take away his protection because he had protected Jesus up to that point. The Jews tried to kill him on numerous occasions. They couldn't. God was protecting him. But in his saying, the ruler of the world is coming, he knew that he had already sent Judas off to betray him. He knew that the soldiers would be coming that night to arrest him. He knew that he would be tortured and beaten and impaled. He knew that, and that was weighing on him. But he obviously was faithful to the end. But the fact that Jesus said, made this comment, that Satan has no hold on him. Obviously, Satan has a hold on all of us. He can appeal to our, our selfishness. Jesus had no selfishness. We do. So he was able to use the Sabians to rob and plunder, and the Chaldeans. He was able to use Judas. Judas was a thief, and that opened him up to being used by Satan. And because of his ignorance, as mentioned, Satan was able to use Peter at that moment to try to appeal to Jesus to be kind to himself. So we are definitely vulnerable and we may not appreciate how vulnerable we are at this time because, like Jesus, we do have a measure of God's protection. But there is an hour of evil coming upon the world, the hour of the judgment. And we might say God is going to take his protection away. Satan is going to be allowed to tyrannize the world. That is expressed in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter, with a two-horned wild beast to look like a lamb coming up out of the earth. It originally spoke like a lamb, but then it began to speak like a dragon. And the chapter before that identifies the dragon as none other than the original serpent, the one called Satan, the devil, who is misleading the entire inhabited earth. That gives you an extent of his influence. He is able to mislead everyone. 
He's able to put thoughts in our minds, to speak to us through other people, to mislead us. He has a hold on us. And uh, when the hour comes, if we do not have Jehovah's protection, if we're not in his secret place, if we don't have faith, Satan will be able to overreach us. Don't kid yourself. Just as when Jesus handed Judas the morsel, it says Satan entered into him. I spoke the other day about brothers betraying brothers, children turning their own parents in to be put to death, and vice versa. It's unthinkable now. But if Satan has a hold on you, and he puts you under pressure, and you don't have faith and courage to stand up, you will do unthinkable things. Well, getting back to uh, this issue with Job, I, I want to uh, share something with you. A, a sister shared this with me uh, 30 years ago or more. I, I can't remember, but uh, Sister Marjorie Johnson. Uh, very interesting point. In the first chapter of Job, it is talking about his great wealth. And in verse 2, it said that he had seven sons and three daughters. And in verse 3, it says his livestock amounted to 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 1,000 cattle, and 500 donkeys, along with a large number of servants. Well, he lost everything, right? But then after Jehovah intervened and Jehovah corrected and reproved Job and severely rebuked his uh, three false comforters, then Jehovah restored his prosperity. And his brothers and sisters and friends came and uh, gave him gifts of gold and money. And Jehovah blessed Job with double everything. And eventually, obviously, Job was remarried, and it says he had 14,000 sheep. Originally, he had 7,000, so he doubled that. 6,000 camels. Originally, he had 3,000, so he doubled that. 1,000 pairs of cattle, 1,000 female donkeys, double everything. And he also came to have seven more sons and three more daughters. Well... Why didn't God double the number of his children? He simply replaced them with the same number, 10. Huh? The answer is, Jehovah will bring all of them back in the resurrection, so that in the new world, he'll have 20. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Yeah. So, I mean, that's really the lesson. Uh, James, the uh, New Testament writer, referred to Job and said, you've seen the outcome that Jehovah has given. And how encouraging. Whatever we're going through now, or whatever we will go through, if we're faithful, uh, that's the whole point. God will bless us with much more than we've ever had or lost. Do you believe that? Well, that's why this account is in the Bible. And God is going to settle this issue. There's no doubt about that. And when it's settled, it will be settled forever. There will be no question about God's his kindness, his love, his way of dealing with things. And I've done another video on this entirely, but... Satan bringing up this challenge is the whole reason that God has not only given his son, that would have done it, the death of Jesus really sealed the deal, and it provided the ransom. God could bring back all of the dead, taking Christ's life as a substitute. But God went much, much further and arranged for 144,000 to be taken from the earth from corrupted humankind, and he's going to give them immortality. And this is just in response to Satan's thing, that God's holding something back, God can't trust you, you buy him off, he'll, you know, 
They only worship you because you give them everything. Well, how about if he gives them immortality, life in themselves, so that they do not even need God? They don't need God's protection. They don't need his blessing. They will have it to the full. They will be exactly like Jehovah because they will be as Jesus is. And Jesus is the very image of God, the exact representation doesn't that really settle the issue? How could anyone ever question God again? And that's the point. And that's why God is patient. Who knows what is to come? Other worlds and other creatures, and some of them might get it in their head, hey, wait a minute, what about? <laughs> and here is the record. And thousands, millions, billions of witnesses that say, no, 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 no. We've been through that before. And... Uh, this character, Satan, who is long gone, he said this and that, and this is what happened. And so don't even go there. <laughs> no doubt that's why the Apostle Paul said in Romans, Oh, the depth of God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How unsearchable his judgments are. And beyond tracing out, his ways are. For who has come to know Jehovah's mind? Or who has become his advisor? Or who has first given to him so that it must be repaid to him? Eh? Well, let's play another one. Well, that piece was called Post-Apocalyptic Funk. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Don't ask me. I, I just play them, okay? Huh. Someone left a comment on one of my recent videos uh, talking about someone uh, revealing that uh, there was spirit channeling going on at, in the watchtower um, at Bethel among the leadership, apparently. And he asked me what I thought of that. And I, you know, I've heard stuff like that before, and I don't put a whole lot of credence in at what other people say, you know, their experiences. People are liars. You have to appreciate that, right? But without question, there is a satanic, presence among Jehovah's Witnesses. And, and I've written a, a, a good bit about that, the man of lawlessness. There will be an evil slave that is condemned by Christ Jesus. And, you know, you get little uh, hints of this evil and the uh, subliminal images and this Masonic thing that's on the... <laughs> they even put it on the stage on their 
JW broadcast on that uh, segment called The um, Inside Story. So there is a, a Masonic infiltration, there's no doubt about that, and they are, you know, Satan worshipers. Jehovah allows that. Just think, I mean, Judas was among the twelve, sitting there at that Passover table, right across from Jesus. Uh, so why should we be shocked that there is a satanic presence within Jehovah's Witnesses? Don't be naive. God allows it for a reason, just as he allowed Judas' presence for a reason. And uh, we'll, we'll have to deal with that at a future point. But we can appreciate that God gives Satan every opportunity to prove his issue, because as I was saying, it's going to be settled with finality and permanently. If you're a new listener, you may be shocked to know that I do not believe that Christ has returned, that his presence began in 1914, nor do I believe that Satan the devil has been cast down from heaven yet. We haven't seen the great woe for the earth that accompanies his ouster from heaven. But it's coming. It's not a long way off. When he's cast down, we're going to be plunged into world war and all the other things that the Watchtower talks about have been, you know, the Spanish influenza. That, that We're going to see a lot worse than that, I'm afraid. But this is uh, Satan's last hurrah. He, he is allowed to fake Christ's return. That's one of the main things that Jesus emphasized when his apostles asked him, what will be the sign of your presence and the uh, conclusion of the system? Jesus said, look out that no one misleads you. That there will be those who say the due time is approached. And when we really get into it, they'll be saying, here is the Christ in the wilderness. Here, No, here he is in the inner chambers. Jesus said, do not believe it. There'll be many false Christs and false prophets. And if it were possible, they would deceive even the chosen ones. Now think about that. How would it be possible to deceive the chosen ones? Those who are the remnant to make up the 144,000. It would only be possible if Satan were behind a voice, a trusted voice, uh, a voice of the faithful and discreet slave? Well, absolutely. In order for Jehovah to settle this with finality, they have to pass that test. And the test will come, get this, the test will come after they are sealed, after Jesus appears to them. That's why it will not be possible for the chosen ones to be deceived. Uh, but if Satan can get just one of them after the final sealing, he would embarrass Jehovah big time. There can't be 143,999 when God said there would be 144,000. There can't be one short. God has to start the anointing over again. That's not going to happen. So he lays it all before Satan. You know, all you got to do is trip up one of these. And uh, we just we mentioned that Satan had no hold on Jesus. How about these imperfect creatures? Satan is the accuser of our brothers. He knows all of our weaknesses. But when we get into it and Jesus appears and strengthens them, Jehovah allows Satan one last shot, and he'll be allowed to kill them, unlike with Job. He'll be allowed to kill them, which will actually fulfill God's purpose as well, because they will be instantly transformed in the twinkling of an eye from flesh to spirit, and they'll all be joined with Christ, and uh, that's when they come against Satan's world and obliterate it and a battle called Armageddon. 
Well, that's going to do it for this program. I thank you for listening. I hope to speak to you again tomorrow. Thank mm-hmm. you.